liberation greetings to all and sundry my dear people of Amazonia my dear people of southern Cameroons dear brave warriors of our liberation movement accept liberation greetings from me comrade John Akuro today Sunday July 31 that's the last day of the month of July in the year 2022 I come in peace, my people, and my dear brethren, brothers and sisters of Amazonia, sympathizers of the Southern Cameroon's cause across the world. Today, I'd like us to look at some very salient issues around our liberation movement. We will revisit a few items regarding the visit of French President Emmanuel Macron and the global view about his passage there and the role France should play with respect to the prosecution of our liberation quest. We will also brush through a few items regarding the attitude of some of our people on the ground when it comes to participating in this movement for freedom. My people of Amazonia, I would not like to take a lot of our time I would like to invite us to share with the people of Agam and even the people of Menchum in several parts of Menchum in the agony that they are facing in the hands of the mainly Fulani community that is being engineered, engineered by La Republic du Cameroon's talks at the behest of the Paul Bia government. Simply because they want to subjugate and keep us in bondage, they are ready to pit one community against the other, with the consequence that souls are falling. And like we know, this Sunday, uh, July 20, uh, 31st or 31, at least two people have already paid the ultimate price in womb. Did we need to get there? Just hear our people from Menchum. It don't be too much. Alam to say today is enough is enough. It be too much for which way they do for Alam people then. Yes. They don't too much for the room. We don't say today ministry must do all other man. They are put and take the land. So when you look at this man, he's even handicapped. You hear him say, today we have decided that Mr. Bias talks will finish all of us and then hand over our land to the Aku people. Now, what does this tell you? That because of what is going on, the Bia government that is specialized in divide and rule knows exactly that there's in the past been some misunderstanding between the Fulani people who live mainly on the hills and herd cattle and the local mentioned population that live in the valleys and on on and, and uh, on the mainland in the villages and do agriculture subsistence agriculture for survival and they know that as a result you always have in the transhuman seasons cattle encroaching onto people's farmlands destroying crops this is a problem that has been going on for a long time and that uh, I mean, a few years back, a lot of efforts have been made to get the people to accommodate each other and to live side by side without any problem. But today, because La Republic of Cameroon is bent on keeping us in bondage, bent on keeping us under their colonial rule, proxy for France, bent on, you know, exploiting our resources with impunity, La Republic of Cameroon today decides to instrumentalize, decides sometimes to even provide arms, provide weapons, and then stand behind and shield, give protection to the Fulani people to hurt the mentioned people. My people, this thing has gone on for too long. And finally, the people decided that they will confront Mr. Paul Bia's talks. And we could see them there out there for in their numbers. Take a look. <laughs> at 
I made use of this video or not this water map of us. It's not mine. I mean, I just got it. That's why I use it in the video. As you can see, these models from all over the place, they have come down, they have said they are tired of running away from the stuff. They have stocks and the food and the things that they carry. They are now ready to all die to protect that which is theirs. My people of Amazon. This is the spirit that birthed this movement, this movement for freedom, this liberation movement in 2016, and then move right up to when it got to the crescendo in 2017. We were prone to coming out in huge numbers. And of course, as you can see there in Agam, nobody was brought down. That is the effect of people power. It's unfortunate that despite that today again, the Fulanese incurs and cause more harm. But trust me, actions like this one speak volumes. They draw not just the attention of the world, but they let even those talks know that looking at their numbers, they can understand that if they continue in this light, it is going to become very complicated for them. This is an act. This is a move that we want to replicate across the board in the weeks ahead, get our people to understand that sometimes we must be able to defeat this fear, challenge this fear, and come out there in huge numbers and put an end to some unfortunate and acceptable practices. That's not all. Let's get back to Menchum. Because, like I said, the people were really determined to express, I mean, to express their disdain, their disappointment, and uh, their rejection of the attitude of the colonial administration of La Republic of Cameroon in Menchum. That's why you see them all out there. Women, children, men, day. even the handicapped, all come out to tell Mr. Paul Bias talks that enough is enough with all of this kind of collaboration with the Fulani people and trying to use them against the people because they have decided to stand for that which is right because they have decided to stand for their rights because they have decided to stand for that which they believe in because they have decided to stand for freedom the punishment that the people of menchum are receiving now in the hands of the same fulani people who will not be moved to la republic du cameroon when this movement ends who will still be forced to stay where they are it's unfortunate what La Republic is doing. And it is even the more unfortunate that our Fulani brothers and sisters allow themselves to be used in this way. We already saw them being used in Gabu. We already saw them being used in Kejom Keku, even in Kejom Ketingo. We already saw them being used in several parts of Donga Mantong. We have seen them being used in Momo. I'm trying to take this opportunity to draw the attention of our Fulani community that if you go down this route, if you continue this way, and the people decide to come out in their numbers to say the time for you to leave and get exiled into the Republic is now, you will not stand it. This is why I'm calling on all of the enlightened Muslim leaders in our various communities, the adults in Bamenda, that's in uh, in um, in Bamenda, that's Mezam, in Momo, in Gokotunja, in Boyo, in Bui, in Donga Mantung, everywhere, that's in Menchum, everywhere, even in the southern zone, wherever you have the Fulani community draw their attention to this reality, that what La Republic is doing, when the eye of the people will be turned on them, La Republic talks will push to a corner, sit back and watch. There's nothing they will do. So this is an unfortunate path that you are charting. Turn back quickly. I have spoken to Nana Sali, who is in the United Kingdom. And I said, you have to reach out to our people, your people, constantly to educate them on the importance of continuing to foster the harmony that is supposed to be ongoing between the, the, the mainly Muslim Fulani population and the Christian people of the Southern Cameroons. We really 
want to have this on our backs. We don't really want to find a situation in which we are locked now in a killing spree among ourselves for the loving and dancing pleasure of La Republic du Cameroon. That should not happen. That definitely is un -Ambazonian. It is un Southern Cameroonian. And it is unacceptable. What I want to say is what we have seen in Menchum. We have to come to the agreement at some point that touching one area is touching the entire Southern Cameroons. So we may have to end up in collaboration with the Takumbung worldwide and all the other groups, movements, and organizations in this liberation movement to come to a blueprint agreement or to come to a blueprint on exactly what code of conduct to take in this kind of situations. Perhaps open up on a day where all Ambazonians fill the streets across Ambazonia to tell the Fulani community and their allies, La Republic du Cameroon, that we will not continue to tolerate this. The fact that we've remained peaceful is not a weakness. It is because by nature, we're peace-loving people and we like harmony. So let this stop and stop now. I will be right back. Dream come true by training you to become a professional scrum master in just six short weeks. At Venbati LLC, we can make your dream come true by training you to become a professional scrum master in just six short weeks. You heard me right, just six weeks. This may be the biggest life-changing decisions you will ever make. They say luck is when opportunity meets preparation. If you were walking down the street and opportunity walked past you, would you recognize it? Well, here is an opportunity you won't want to miss. At Venbati LLC, our world-class trainers would prepare you for one of the best career changes you will ever make. And then you can consider yourself lucky when you make that six-figure income and laugh your way to the bank. If you are that person who can recognize an opportunity, call us at 240-701-7796. Check out our website, www.venbati.com. We have limited spaces. First come, first serve. Come one, come all. Would you like... So, like I was pointing out a while ago there for my people, the week was full. Very, very full. My people... While our brothers and sisters are in the various dungeons of La Republique du Cameroon, serving long terms, some even serving life sentences for doing absolutely nothing, mainly for standing up and to speak out against unacceptable living conditions, against colonial invasion by La Republique du Cameroon. La Republique du Cameroon is today freeing a Barabbas, freeing someone whom we read in the papers had embezzled upward of 40 billion CFA francs. Wait a minute. If you don't, you don't understand what I mean by 40 billion here, it may be too much for you to hear. That is 40,000 million. That is 1, 1 million. 40,000 by one man. At the end of the day, they tell us that he has paid back 1.2 billion, that is 1,200 million out of 40,000 million that he stole. Yet, they are setting him free. And this is how it is received. Watch. <laughs> So, when you read in the Bible that when Pontius Pilate asked the people, who should I free? Jesus of Nazareth also says he is king or Barabbas, the thief, the celebrated thief that everybody knows. Of course. And the people said Barabbas. We know the rest. This is exactly what is happening in that community today. That is why Cameroon is a country we must not, I mean, we must not ever have anything to do with. Because 
that country is horrible. Just watch this again. <laughs> So my people, this is not like these people are aware that Basil at Tanganakuna was the biggest thief of all times. Of course, they are aware. Of course, they know. They know that the resources that Basil at Tanganakuna has embezzled. Oh my goodness, could build roads and build and build until you will have roads no more in that country. Could build hospitals. That would take care of the many people who are dying because they don't have access to good health care delivery. That that money could be schools. That you will not have people in the far north of La Republic of Cameroon teaching children under trees. That you will not have people in Menchum where they claimed that were part of their country learning under touches. That that money could provide sources of renewable energy that will provide power supply that the people will not be living with an erratic electricity supply system. One man stole all of this and yet he has been set free. And this is where it all started. This confidential letter signed by Mr. Paul Bia or by uh, Ferdinand Gongo at the BS of Mr. Paul Bia on July 25 says through the high instructions or at the behest or following very high instructions from the President of the Republic, Mr. Basil Atanganakuna must be set free and with immediate effect and the claim he has paid back what he stole. And that is how few days after only, Basil Atanganakuna finds himself on the streets. Now, there are a number of lessons we draw from this and so as Southern Cameroonians. Never forget this, that this liberation movement began with common law lawyers in the Southern Cameroon seeking the respect for the rule of law. The respect for the rule of law. This kind of thing tells each and everyone that in the Republic of Cameroon there is no separation of powers. The judiciary is not independent, just like the legislature. For that reason, the law is Paul Bia, and Paul Bia is the law. Whoever he decides to throw in jail and turns the and looks the other way, you rot in jail. The magistrates, the lawyers, the court registrar, the words of outcome and seat in court that are doing everything. It's a parody. Absolute parody. There is no such thing as the rule of law in that place. That is why, with a stroke of a pen, free Basil at Tanganakuna, and he's free. At the same time, one of their citizens, Mr. Amadou Vamulke, from Mayodanai in the far north, has been in prison for six years with no trial. He has never been sentenced. Accusation, he embezzled. But to date, there is nothing to prove that he embezzled. My people of Ambazonia, unknown to a good lot of us, because there's something a lot of people don't know. Mr. Amadou Vamulke is a victim of trying to make living together seamless in La Republic of Cameroon. Mr. Amadou Vamulke got the eyes on him when he drew the attention of the government of La Republic of Cameroon that there was need to create an all English language channel on CRTV. When Mr. Amadou Vamulke put in place a project to separate the newsrooms, that you have an English language newsroom, you have a French language newsroom, so that each people are able to treat the news following their cultural backgrounds, following the realities of their various parts of what was considered that country at the time. So that the English-speaking people will have a channel dedicated to addressing the concerns and the, and the you know, problems of the people of the Southern Cameroons in a language they understood. 
And also, Mr. Vamuke was buoyed by the fact that he observed, he noticed that in CRTV, Southern Cameroonians or Anglophones as they called us at the time, were permanent deputies, permanent assistants. He noticed that the post of editor-in-chief was an exclusive preserve of the Francophones. And so he wanted to put an end to this. Reason? He was separating the newsrooms so that you have an editor-in-chief for English language news, an editor-in-chief for French language news, so that there will be no interference at both ends. And at the same time, you will not have one being permanently an assistant to the next. This egalitarian approach was vigorously resisted at a 2 d And they forced Famuke, therefore, to kill the project of the creation of an English language channel at CRTV. They forced Vamuke to shut down the prospects of dividing the newsrooms into an English language newsroom and a French language newsroom. But the only thing he ended up achieving was at least having that you have an editor-in-chief for French language news and an editor-in-chief for English language news, even if at the end of the day, the editor-in-chief for French language news is still technically an assistant to the editor-in-chief of French language news because he has all the sources, all the information, all the power, all the everything, and you are forced to depend on him to do whatever you have to do. That is why they had their eyes on Vamuke and said, this man is trying to free a set of people we have captured and we are squeezing the way we want. That is why, despite an outcry from the rest of the world that this man Vamuke is in here for nothing, they will not budge. They will prefer to free Barabbas. They will prefer to free a bandit, a hardened bandit. But of course, along the lines, we all have come to understand why they freed this bandit. Because whether Mr. Bia likes it or not, we have people inside the system who are completely flabbergasted with what is happening and with what their eyes are seeing. That is why they reached out to me and they said, Mr. Kuro, look at this picture. Listen, we have looked at this picture. Everyone has seen it. We've talked about it. But there is more to it that meets the eyes. If you know how to write a story, take a careful look at this picture. You look at Macron, straight face, although he makes as if he's trying to smile, but he's a bit bemused. The way he looks at Frank, you see Frank all smile, the teeth are out 32, and everything, and Paul Bear looking behind, because trying to say, look, this is my son, and I think he can take over from me. This was the one overall thing that they needed to talk about. And he is the man who will continue to work hard to hold Ambazonia in check to make sure that in collaboration with O.C. Joshua, because they are very close, you use O.C. Joshua and Frundi to keep Southern Cameroons in bondage to the glory of France. But don't forget this. Mr. Macron, Mr. Emmanuel Macron, when he completed this, he definitely made some opinions. Remember that prior to Mr. Macron's visit, there was a huge campaign, as you can see here. I had put some of this before, but I come back to them for a reason. Because today, you are hearing that they are arresting and detaining the leaders of the Frankist movement, people involved with the Frankist movement, and they are asking them who authorized them to be putting all these flyers up. But my people, look at this. This flyer you see here is not just hanging by a roadside somewhere. It is across the road, near one of the tallest buildings in Yawunde. It is not just across the road, but on the all-important itinerary to the Simalene International Airport that Emmanuel Macron had to use. Of course, it already indicated that you had one country with two presidents, that the other president is in the twilight of his age, while this one is a younger president that is taking over. And so, therefore, that is why he was being projected. And why was he being projected? It was a message you were sending to Macron that you, France, you have uh, installed Idris Debi, that's Mohammed Debi in charge. 
That's Mr. Macron. Recall before you he had installed four Nyasingbe in Togo to take over from his father. Before four Nyasingbe, he had installed Ali Bongo in Gabon to take over from his father. And from the look of things uh, in uh, Congo, Brazzaville, uh, Sasu Ngeso has four of his children who have just gone into parliament, of course, getting ready to take over from him. So therefore, me, Mr. Bia, this is my son that I'm presenting to you. Take a careful look at him, plan with him. I've heard, I've had unconfirmed information because I've not been able to confirm this independently from my sources that Frank Bia should be on his way to France in a few days to see if he could continue lobbying to have a better discussion with Mr. Macron, of course, for reasons that we know. And so, therefore, you see that these acts were deliberate. But most importantly, take a look at the message here. Because this is what interests me. This is what should concern Southern Cameroonians. Of course, it should also, especially, concern citizens of La Republique du Cameroon. But this is what should concern Southern Cameroonians. Frank Emmanuel Bia, Garang Dezaki, en faveur du développement. Garang Dezaki. This message, Garang Dezaki, it has a clear connotation. Garang Dezaki, that is continuity. Continuity. So for those who are dreaming that, oh, like yes, we are progressive, uh, CBD were this and that and all and all, so we know when the act goes, the next president will come, they will fix this thing, we'll have a federalist system. And Listen, Bia is sending a message to you, and at the same time, this message to France, that Mr. Macron, I will ensure continuity. I will continue to hold Ambazonia in check for you, using slaves like O.C. Joshua and Frundi. I will do that on the apparatus, the SDF. I will. I will. Continuity. Which means it's a continuity of carnage. Continuity of exploitation. Continuity of the massacre of our people. And continuity of the perpetration of genocide on our people. This is why when you get up from your sleep, the first thing you should think about is how far are we today with the resistance? The resistance is our lives. The resistance is our lives. Nothing short of this. You should know that if we don't resist all the way to the end right now, the worst is still to come. This is the one thing I like to keep reminding our people every day, especially those who deliberately play the role of so-called blacklegs. When you go about joint positions of your own children, your own brothers, your own sisters who rise up, to try to see how to secure a better country for us all. The last time I said, always do a conscience check when you do that. Because the cries that you'll be hearing and the agony you'll be seeing in the eyes of people is next door to you. It's your neighbor. It's the next neighborhood, not far away from you. But you are doing that for somebody who is hundreds of kilometers away, only doing that to exploit you because at the end of the day, you yourself will fall under the sledgehammer. So, my people, this is therefore where it all began, the Frankist movement. When you take a look at this decision, you see that it was signed on the 12th of December 2021. I mean 12th of December 2021, the creation of a Frankist movement. And I had the senior divisional officer, of the Mvila to approve this, or rather of the, uh, of uh, yeah, I think Mvila, to approve this. So this whole Frankie thing has been around for a while and has even had authorizations here and there. Although the SDO who signed this is today claiming he did not sign it, that that decision does not come from his office, that he has even checked the records and all that and has not seen anything like that. But of course, why the current denial? Because they are moving to the next stage. Some people out there are interpreting it to mean that it is because they have seen that it has backfired. No, 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 my people. Don't ever make any such mistake. Don't ever dare. La Republic du Cameroon does not do anything by error. They are deliberate about everything they do. And at each state, whatever action they take has an objective. 
take note, the people who were arrested that they were putting up unauthorized flyers for the Frankist movement and taken to the first district police station in Yaoundé were freed. Listen to me, they didn't spend the night there. They were set free. Now look at the militants of the MRC party who planned to go out there for a peaceful march. Even some of them who finally never went out, who were still in their houses, who were arrested from their homes, are in detention until today. Some have been handed seven-year jail terms. Look at uh, 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 a consul, this young girl in Boya, that is reported to have been an ex-girlfriend to uh, our brother, foot soldier, no pity. She is in detention with her baby of only a few months old in Boya until date for no crime committed. But people who are supposedly or who supposedly put up banners of such a magnitude unauthorized are today being arrested, caressed, and set free to go back and sleep in their homes and asked to come back on Monday. So they were coming back this August 1 to sit down there and explain exactly what, oh, really? Listen, my people, don't be fooled. Don't ever be fooled by such inanities. La République du Cameroon had a message to pass across. They needed to test the waters and they needed to cause it to start sinking in the minds of Cameroonians that Frank Dia would take over from his father. And so, because they have attained that objective already, of already putting it in the minds of the people that it is not only a possibility, it is even being discussed and it is already being planned, then they tell themselves, because Paul Bia is still breathing some air, this is not the moment to spoil the place. Now that we have pushed it gradually in the minds of the people and they are already contemplating it let's make as if this is something we don't agree with so we send all the opponents to sleep and they will get up one morning from their slumber and find frank Bia carefully installed at, at the duty as their next president that is exactly what this is it is a reuse and all these steps were carefully planned so that they know this that they say we want to start agitating to go back to sleep and say, oh no, everything has gone back home and we'll wait until 2025. Also that Cabral Libby that said you will kill all of us, that you will walk on our corpses, all of us, he should hold his peace or they should have time enough to bribe him up before that time. So, I mean, listen, there is no 2025. That stuff is being played now. So what is happening now is just another step in a highly sophisticated ploy. So my people of Ambazonia, my people of the Southern Cameroons, my interest is let us be informed. Let us be educated about this. Let us be sens sensitized on this every other day so we know exactly where we stand. So, uh, I guess I was not yet there. So now, when you look at this act authorizing the Frankist movement, of course, you see the names of the caliber of people who are on it. It leaves you to understand what I'm talking about. And now take a, take a, a look at this. Did Macron exactly buy what Bia was saying? No. Somebody took time off and observed what I equally observed. He observed that a number of curious things happened and surrounded Macron's visit to Cameroon. First, he cut short his trip because that trip was supposed to be two days or even three. But at the last minute, it was reduced to barely arriving late at night, having lunch or having a tete, -a -tete the next day, a, uh, I mean, um, a press briefing, a very short state dinner, fun at uh, the French uh, embassy, and then some fun at Yannick Noir's uh, compound and all that. And then in the end, uh, uh, Macron just smuggles or sneaks out of Cameroon, there was no more ceremony to see him off at the airport as we saw a ceremony to bring him into the country uh, where at which Paul Bia was represented by the Prime Minister. And look at it. 
When that happens, Macron on his way back, like I said earlier, right in the aircraft, appoints a military general as ambassador, new ambassador to Cameroon. But before that, he made these very important remarks at the residence of Yannick Noah. He said, if I, Emmanuel Macron, were in Cameroon, with the current electoral law, I will never, ever have been elected president. Did anybody hear that? I mean, Emmanuel Macron said that on Cameroon soil, in Yaoundé, that looking at the current electoral law in this country, of course, he was just trying to explain why Paul Bia can be there until the day he breathed the last. And even after he breathed the last, his remains can still rule for a good number of years. Ah, Macron says, if I were a Cameroonian in this country, under the current electoral law, I will never, ever be elected president. Of course, and then when he leaves, he appoints a military general. Uh, I think it's four stars, the last I said five stars. A four-star military general as the French ambassador to Cameroon. This should be a message that even France knows the worst is expected in that country. Listen, my people of Ambazonia, those of you who are leaving Ambazonia, leaving southern Cameroon, crossing over to La Republique du Cameroon to invest by huge expanse of land, build schools, build this and that, or whatnot, you tell yourself that you're winning, but trust me, before long, you realize the folly of your action. Because I know a good lot of you who are doing that are absolutely against our aspirations for freedom. And when you do that, you tell yourself, oh no, because there's seen security that way, I've come here, I'm establishing, and, and the people use you as a trophy. That's why a French representative, I mean, of France, at a meeting of the European Union to talk about the situation in the southern Cameroon, said that a lot more of our people are moving relative to the Republic of Cameroon, feeling more at home, feeling very comfortable there, an indication that there is no issue with being part of La Republic du Cameroon. There are only a few people agitating and spoiling the peace. So you should see the role that you are playing by doing this. Because at the end of the day, you even feel worse in the cat among the category of those who are taking sides with the oppressor against your own people. Don't tell me just in pursuit of economic interest. As I'm saying this, even some people in the diaspora who are in the struggle, who are contributing tirelessly in this struggle, both financially and otherwise, are also busy buying land, either in Douala or Yaoundé. As you say, well, well, for the time being, want to be making some money. Listen, that is counterproductive. If you cease and desist, it will do all of us a lot of good. And so, my people, while La Republique is there busy fighting so hard to please France by holding down Amazonia, freeing hardened bandits and struggling only sleepy and dreaming on how to impose Frank on people, Ghana is busy making strikes. This, this is the Pokwase Interchange. This is Ghana. Ghana's first four-tier no. interchange Please, located on the Accra and India Sawam Europe Highway. Ghana. It was commissioned Texas. by President this Nana Akufuade. Ghana. Ghana. Construction began in 2018 and was this completed in 2021. Ghana. It became the largest four-tier interchange Ghana. in West Africa Ready after completion. This interchange is estimated to cost about oh $94 million, dollars, which was founded by the African Development Bank and the government of Ghana. And don't forget to leave a comment, like, and share us. this video. As soon as we take back our country. Follow us for more content. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Because, my people, anytime you settle for less than you deserve, you will end up with less than you settled for. And the cost of that, of that project, $94 million. Oh, my goodness. Listen. 94 million dollars that's less than 60 billion in cfa that's less than 60 billion in cfa remember bazia tanganakuna stole 40 billion which means the money stolen by bazia tanganakuna 
that they saw could build this. But if it were in La Republique du Cameroon that they were trying to build this thing, trust me, you'll be hearing about $1 billion, and you'll be hearing that it will take 20 years, and even after 20 years, it will never be completed. So therefore, my people, when we see things therefore like this, like uh, Mr. Thibault Nagetwit, he says, so French President Macron is calling for decentralization as a way to resolve Cameroon's Anglophone and Bazonia crisis. If only the BR regime had pursued genuine decentralization three years ago, instead of playing games, it might have worked. But today, now, I understand what he's saying, but today, because I'm saying up, up, of course, he's saying what you and I know, that today, that is not only too little, it is extremely late. But mind you, Emmanuel Macron was not talking about decentralization anymore. Emmanuel Macron signaled to Mr. Pobia that decentralization, as it were, had failed. And so he should be thinking of moving to something else. <laughs> and that's something else that Mr. Emmanuel Macron proposed to Pobia is not even the federalism that some, some daydreamers have been hoping for. No. He talks about something called regionalism. And they are already beginning to doubt something. Just hang on. Don't go away. To make a six-figure income? Well, you have come to the right place. At Venbati LLC, we can make your dream come true by training you to become a professional scrum master in just six short weeks. You heard me right. Just six weeks. This may be the biggest life-changing decisions you will ever make. They say luck is when opportunity meets preparation. If you were walking down the street and opportunity walked past you, would you recognize it? Well, here is an opportunity you won't want to miss. At Venbati LLC, our world-class trainers would prepare you for one of the best career changes you will ever make. And then you can consider yourself lucky when you make that six-figure income and laugh your way to the bank. If you are that person who can recognize an opportunity, call us at 240-701-7796. Check out our website, www.venbati.com. We have limited spaces. First come, first serve. Come one, come all. And so, yeah, while that uh, commercial was going on, I received this message. I'm just seeing it now. Apparently, the message has been there. Since I uh, apologize that I did not pay attention to your text messages. And so is asking me, Mr. Kuro, what are you saying about the lockdown that has been called for one month? And uh, that is going to, you know, go all the month of uh, August. So what are you saying about it? We're hearing counter calls and honorable. Want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Usually, my people, I don't want to get into certain things that will be unnecessary controversy within the framework of broadcasts like this one. But because a question has been asked, I don't want to ignore it. And I want to be really, really clear in my response. Listen, I did not call for a lockdown. The consortium to which I belong did not call for a lockdown. It's just like at the arrival of Emmanuel Macron, there was a three-day lockdown, ghost town call, that still was not called by me. And I was asked here to comment and I made a comment. The first thing I would like to say is, of course, I listened to Komori Cho Ayaba announcing that we're reducing that lockdown from one month to one week. That is not, no longer going to be the entire month of August, it's going to be one week. Sometimes I'll begin by asking this question. What is the purpose of the lockdown? Is there any specific objective to attain through this lockdown? Have the people been carefully sensitized? Have the people been carried along with the reason for the lockdown? It is also true that we are at war with La Republic du Cameroon and locked in a conflict like this one. Sometimes there are certain things that will be planned, but that will not be so seriously explained because that is the nature of this kind of things. But regarding lockdowns, 
ghost towns and all of this in general, I have this to say. When the consortium determined to make Monday a traditional ghost town day, it was in total agreement with all the castes of the community at the time. And take note that at that time, we had no amber boys. There were no sticks, nothing, nothing. But these ghost town calls were respected to the letter. And that Monday ghost town call has continued to be respected to the date, to the letter, until this day, without need for any enforcement by anyone, because the people got carried along, because the people are a part of it. Now, is it possible to carry the people along all the time who are calling on lockdowns? Even if, my response is, even if we are not going to explain to them completely, fully, the purpose of it, we should be able to have at least something that convinces the people that this is the reason for this lockdown. So therefore, in relation to the lockdown in question, I have the conviction that those who called for it have something they want to do. Now that has been reduced to one week, okay, better. But this is what I think, my people. Because the consortium has uh, mandated me to reach out to the leadership of all the other groups, movements, and organizations concerned with prosecuting the struggle or the liberation movement for Amazonia so that we come to a consensus and agree to a blueprint on how lockdowns should be caught and managed. Who should call a lockdown? What will generate the call for a lockdown? On what events? Look at, in the days, in the southern Cameroons, we had instituted these things in such a way that people knew what will happen when. They could predict that because of this event or the other one, there will be a ghost town or a lockdown. And they start preparing automatically for it with no one telling them. We all know that the day our leaders who are in detention in Yaoundé were being taken to court, automatically it was ghost towns. Nobody needed to come up to announce that, okay, there will be ghost town on this day. That is the spirit of the resistance. So we need to come to that kind of consensus again with our people on the kind of additional things or events that should generate the cause for a lockdown. So that working hand in glove and in spiritual tandem, with our people, we are able to handle this without any bruises. But don't forget that because we are locked in a conflict of defiance, because we are locked in a conflict that requires that we constantly make our land ungovernable, there could be some impetuous decisions. But the way to go is, like I have said already, we need to reach out to each other so that there is harmony. Not like what is happening now, that even as you are asking me to this, this question before I came into this broadcast, I was listening to some one there say, no, this, my group or my government, whatever, has not called lockdown. Nobody should go. The other one say, no, when it comes to kidnapping, when it comes to this, they are very strong. Let me see where they, where they are fighting. Nobody should respect. The other one say, no, go about your usual activities. But take note, there is a price to pay in all this. Disorder has a huge toll when it comes to paying a price. And too often, our people, the same people we are fighting for, had, have ended up paying the price of our infighting. Because he come out and say, no, 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 don't respect, go out. If something happens to somebody when are listening to you, and you are not on the ground there to provide them that protection, you lose. You lose your life. That's the truth. So rather than doing some of those things that put our people at risk, I think it is beneficial, like I've said, that we should be able to all agree to a blueprint. And so, because the consortium has mandated me in doing that, I will not elaborate on this further. I'm going to start trying to reach out. For those who are under the CDN platform, of course, I will get in touch with the CDN and I will try to see how we put our heads together. For those who are out of this platform, we will try to reach out so that we are able to get to a consensus. So, all I will call on our people to do is don't put yourself in harm's way. Watch the situation carefully and take a decision that puts your protection at 100% in your mind. Or say at 99% because you can't ensure 100% by yourself. This is the most important thing I should say at this point in time. Otherwise, 
wisdom. We call that. Respect it. And then we protest. We don't go with this way of doing things. Some will say, I'm trying to, to, to pamper. I definitely am not. Because I think that this order is not the way to go. But on the ground, we have to stay alive. Let's reason this out and let us always try to see how to foster consensus over infighting. So I'm going back, therefore, to this broadcast and to what I was saying a while ago about Macron talk about regionalism. And so Professor Carlson Anyangwe sent this to me. And he said, if I trust my source at Minad, then administrative setup of Cameroon will in the days ahead be altered. The Southwest and Northwest regions are going to be heavily affected by the new arrangement. I fear for my Kupen Wanengoba division that may likely be placed under the would-be Mungo something, while other divisions in the two regions are likely to be tied to larger towns of neighboring regions. My source is confirming the plan again this morning. Listen, my people. I said earlier, exactly what they were doing with Frank and the Frankies, this is what they are doing here. Testing the waters. By this, they say, oh, it's a leak. My source, they want to see how will we react if such a thing happens. Remember, this is not the first time they've tried to do that. They have tried to talk even of a federally set up where they link what they call southwest to the littoral and link what they call northwest to the west, so that they um, much. Uh, so I mean, so that they hasten up our assimilation, as Mr. Pobia said in France. Listen, my people, and I have proposed to the consortium to get out a press release on this, and I'm calling on all other groups, movements. And, and uh, you know, uh, organizations in this liberation movement don't take this lightly. Tell the Republic of Cameroon in the face exactly what is going to happen. Let them dare. Because that now is absolutely what they will call the expansion of their territory into the territory of Ambazonia. And that will be violating international law. The African Union inherited from the Organization of African Unity that boundaries of the various countries were frozen. The borders were frozen at independence. There is therefore no room for expansion. So any move La Republic du Cameroon makes in cutting a parcel of our territory to attach to any part of the territory in the name of so-called reorganization will be met I mean, will be met with unimaginable reaction across Ambazonia. Let this be made clear to Yaoundé in very triumphant terms. Listen, this kind of actions happen because of some morons whom we never send to Yaoundé and who pass around and call themselves our parliamentarians or our representatives. When you see a joker, like this one calls himself uh, Njingu Musa, this was somebody who was parading a plankton in the Ministry of Finance there, who suddenly found himself propelled through election rigging to get to Parliament. And today, he says he's asking, he's asking for the creation of a military base in Gokutunja. And he says, I have made, cons uh, made a census of all those who are carrying out this act of terrorism in Gokutunja, and very few Gokutunja children are inside. That is why we need a military base. It is a necessity, not a luxury. If we don't eradicate them, I bet you, move carelessly. Even here in Upstation, you will go. Now, that tells you where he is standing. He's standing Upstation in Bamenda. He can't put his leg in Gokutunja where he says he's member of parliament. Where he says he represents the people. Where he says the people voted for him. Listen, it's because of morons like this one. Empty scores, norm scores like this one. That La Republic of Cameroon is contemplating such a thing. I think let them dare. Let them dare. We need to tell them that message. Always remind them. I say always remind them. Lest they forget. Because they may be taking us for granted. We have to tell them. Always. And remind them that it will not work. It can never work. Let them not even try it. 
And that is why I come to this. Because when uh, Mr. Tibonagi says, like it or not, France holds the biggest cards when it comes to influencing Cameroon. Honestly, I'm glad he makes a differentiation when it comes to influencing Cameroon. And then he says, Ambazonia leaders, take a careful look at this because the contrast is clear. You see, Cam hashtag Cameroon the other way, hashtag Ambazonia the other way. These are two separate entities. No meeting point. But it says Ambazonian leaders should engage France in their struggle. But first must come unity among the various Ambazonian factions. Else, divide and conquer. Listen, my people. What Mr. Tibonagi is saying here should not be misconstrued to mean he is saying if we don't open up discussion of France, we will never be free. Cancel it. Forget it. That's not true. And that's not possible. But he says the attitude of Cameroon, La Republic of Cameroon, is dictated by France. So if we need to get Cameroon to somewhere, let's begin with France. Because if France says, yes, I'm ready to sit, La Republic of Cameroon will be forced to sit or will be asked or instructed to sit. That's how bad it is. That's what Mr. Tibonagi is saying here. So engaging with France does not mean going to submit to France, means to let France know that once we are able to send La Republic du Cameroon out of our territory, we will be open to doing business with France, just like we will be open to doing business with other countries. Of course, France has far more investments in Nigeria than they have in Cameroon. Nigeria was never a colony to France. France has a lot of investments there. What they have in Cameroon is a joke compared to what France has as investment in, in Nigeria. And it is like that even in several other Anglo-Saxon countries. So all we need to do is remind France, no, we're not going to have you as an enemy. Come on. We will do business with you. But not the way you do it with the Republic of Cameroon. No. It will be sane and clear business. Win-win on all sides. Where each state protects its national interests. We should always bear this in mind. That doesn't mean we should fear France because France like that is too powerful. If France does not say yes, we cannot go. Which France? The same France that is being reduced to ridicule and rubble across the, 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 the African continent today. If you doubt, listen to this young girl. Existence de l'Union Africaine. Monsieur le Président, vous l'aimez le dire. Nous sommes au Mali pour aider le Mali. Si nous n'étions pas venus au Sahel, il n'allait pas avoir de gouvernement actuellement au Mali. J'ai envie de vous dire que si ce n'était pas les Africains, ils n'allaient pas avoir de France aujourd'hui. Did you hear what this courageous young journalist just told Emmanuel Macron? That year you often come and say, oh, we are coming to help Africa, to assist Africa. That if France did not intervene in Mali, there will be no government in Mali today. It's because France sacrificed. No, the young lady reminds Macron in his face. She's a journalist before his very eyes exactly what the heads of state cannot do the younger generation of africans today are doing especially the women are take the young girls are taking the challenge she tells macron to his face if there is no africa there is no france and she even goes further listen again nous sommes liés nous sommes liés nous sommes liés arrêtez de dire que vous êtes venus nous aider non parce que le terrorisme ne menace pas que le mali so you hear what she says? Stop saying you are coming to help us. No, 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 no. Because, yeah, we are linked, we are interwoven, we should be partners. Partners. No one subject to the other. No. And don't say you are coming to help because terrorism is affecting even France. So don't claim you are coming to help us because you two are facing that ill. It should be a kind of partnership. Oh my goodness. She goes on. Arrêtez de nous culpabiliser sur une position de victime. Mais madame, je vous culpabilise pas. Monsieur le président, je pas terminé. Je vous culpabilise pas. J'essaie de restaurer justement. Can you see that? She pushed Emmanuel Macron's back right to the wall that he couldn't hold himself again. We have seen him before just smile and laugh and wait until the finish, but this time he couldn't bear it. Oh no, he couldn't. She pushed him. She hit the nail on the head and she was pounding. 
and he lost his tempo. He said, no, 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 no. He starts trying to respond. Let's watch. Oh, my goodness. It's becoming interesting. Even more interesting. The dialogue is reciprocal and respect. Yes. We are not here simply for our interests when we arrive in Mali in 2013. It's a fact. Par contre, ce que vous avez dit sur la Libye, je l'ai dit plusieurs fois comme président, je partage ce que vous avez dit. La Libye, on n'a pas respecté la souveraineté d'un peuple, et ça, c'est une erreur. D'accord. Do, do, do you see what this young girl succeeded in doing? She succeeded in causing Mr. Macron to admit that they violated the sovereignty of the people of Libya by doing what they did to Gaddafi. Oh my goodness. See, it caused me even to speak a language I don't even understand myself. Yes! She pushed him to the wall. Exactly what the African leaders were supposed to be looking at Macron in the eyes and telling him because they represent us. Because they claim to represent us. Because they speak for us. So they're not speaking for themselves. So to look at him in the eyes. But some can't even look at him eyeball to eyeball. But look at what this young girl, in a few seconds, has been able to squeeze out of Macron. I say, no, we did not violate. Say, stop telling us that you came there to uh, uh, Mali uh, 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 for, to protect the interests of the Mali. No, 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 no. It's not just the interests of the Mali. It's your interest. I start to say, no, 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 it's not just our interest. Listen. <sighs> Merci d'avoir reconnu ça et si vous reconnaissez ça, vous allez voir que ce qui se passe au Sahel n'est que les conséquences de cette intervention. Donc vous êtes. So did you hear? And the girl pushes the button further. She tells Macron, thank you for recognizing that you aid in Libya, for recognizing that your policy in Libya was horrible. But what I want you to own, 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 to take responsibility for today is that what is happening in the Sahel. In Mali, in Algeria, in all these other countries today, is a direct consequence of that act that you took, violating the sovereignty of the people of Libya. So what is happening in Mali today? Don't come and play the uh, the good boy coming to that you're coming to help us resolve it. You created it. You are at the origin of it. Let's finish. Oh, Sahel. Pour corriger l'erreur que vous avez commis en Libye et en corrigeant ces erreurs, vous êtes en train de commettre d'autres erreurs. Monsieur le Président, je vous rappelle que l'intervention militaire étrangère n'a jamais réglé un problème. La Libye, elle est comment aujourd'hui L'Afghanistan, c'est comment aujourd'hui Donc l'intervention militaire ne va pas arranger les choses. Je ne voudrais pas que mon pays soit comme la Libye. Prenez votre responsabilité et surtout arrêtez de dire que nous sommes là pour vous aider. Non, vous n'êtes pas là pour nous aider. On est ensemble. On a un ennemi commun. On le combat ensemble. Et pour finir, ces sorties des derniers, ces, ces derniers jours entre vous et les autorités maliennes, c'est juste une honte. Parce que c'est une honte. Vous avez le même ennemi et l'ennemi, il est grandi. Du coup, arrêtez ça. Arrêtez ces discours paternalistes. Dire que nous allons vous aider. Nous allons. Non, nous n'avons pas besoin d'aide. Nous avons besoin de coopération. Nous avons besoin de partenariats. Et nous sommes liés par l'histoire, mais nous sommes liés par les dangers. Nous sommes liés par les défis. Mais je suis 100% d'accord avec ce que vous venez de dire. So the young girl, oh gosh, she tells Macron, stop making noise. We are coming to help you. No, we are partners. We want partnership, we don't want help, we don't want assistance, we want partnership, we want cooperation, cooperation, partnership, cooperation, not assistance. No, stop that. And she tells him, even when you claim that you are now coming to Mali to resolve the issues that were created by you in Libya, that are stretching here, you are even multiplying the errors, oh Lord. You see, she caused Macron to lose his tempo. This is the Africa I want to be proud of. This is how I want to model Ambazonia. If these journalists who confronted Macron were a Cameroonian, she cannot dare. Because if she did, as Macron is leaving, she is either going six feet or to jail. That is not a country we have to have anything to do with. None. Because in the case of Cameroon, questions were even written and given to the people who had to ask them. And they had to ask them from the government's viewpoint. Do you hear that? You don't get it? Forget about it. That's what it is. 
That is not a country we should belong to. That is why we have to end the shackles of black on black colonialism. We have to end the shackles of French colonial rule in Ambazonia by proxy. We have to end the shackles of any form of colonial influence in our territory. It takes determination. It takes hard work. It takes the heavy weight lifting. And my people of Ambazonia, we have all what it takes to do that. That thing lies in our determination. That thing lies in our decision to focus. That thing lies in us doing what uh, Mr. Tibor Nagi is saying. I read in places. Some people say, I'm anti-unity anti, uh, or you're coming out. With... I'm not sure there's anyone who has focused on the idea of unity as much as I do. But to some people, unity in this, in this liberation movement, to some people, unity means submitting to them. If you don't submit to them, then you are anti-unity. That is not the definition of unity. The definition of unity or unity of purpose is that we all come together and recognize that as actors, we each have a role to play and we each have a contribution to make and that we can discuss on very important issues, come to agreement. You have a point, I have a point. You disagree with me, I disagree with you. At the end of the day, we come to some kind of convergence and then we are able to push out actions together. That's the definition of unity. If your definition of unity is submission, then you are right to say I'm anti-unity because I'm not somebody who gives in or who goes in through what you, through, I mean, that kind of dictum where you think that unity is submission. It's just like La Republic du Cameroon believes that for them, unity is submission. And that's why they feel that for us to live together, we have to submit ourselves. And that's why we are telling them, no, that that bad experiment that we got into in 1961 has got to end. In this same movement, I will say the same thing. And that's why I'll remind you every day that it is, there's nothing wrong with being alone. Going with the crowds is easier than staying alone. But listen, my people, I'm not alone. Because we, the consortium that I have the, 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 the honor to, to lead, we're in a block. We're under the CDN platform. And I am saying this. Constantly, we are struggling to reach out on a daily basis to get people. Let us even just agree on important issues that touch on the lives of each and everyone. If you have your definition of unity, which is submission, you meet me as an obstacle. But if you understand what unity is all about, you will get to know that I am one of the biggest advocates of that unity. Thank you for your time. To God be the glory.